Fest News at 9. Fest. The highlights. Governor Solo announces interventions to cushion effect of current economic hardship on residents. Army chief faults military civilian clashes, pledges to protect citizens' rights. On foreign scene, police dismantles smuggling gang operating on the English Channel. And in sport, Ghana female football team set to receive bonuses ahead 2024 Olympic Games qualifier against Zambia. Now, the details. I am Sarah Adesoya. A spot of efforts to ease the current economic hardship on, on Lagosians, Lagos State Governor Babaji de Sawalu has announced various interventions in different sectors, including the civil service, public transportation, health, education, food sector, among others. Speaking during a live media chat, tagged Sawalu Speaks, Governor Sawalu directed a flexible work hours for civil servants, which will see officers on grade levels 1 to 14 come to work three times a week, while those on levels 15 to 17 will miss work once a week and promised prompt payment of pensioners and time to rent. Governor Sawalu will also reintroduce 25% reduction in all public transportation, including the Bosch Rapid Transit, BRT, rail and ferries, pledged to increase transport support for teachers in public schools across the state and exempt parents from showing evidence of tax payments to encourage enrollment of more students in school. The governor said his administration targets to distribute combo food bags to over 300,000 households. While in the health sector, 31 general hospitals across the state have been directed to take child deliveries for free. Just as six health districts will embark on free health mission twice a week. We're going to be opening what we call Sunday markets in about 42 markets in Lagos. Sunday market. What you will see in that in those markets, you know, is the same sort of like you know stable you know, food item, but this time. You'll be buying, but you'll be buying at a reduced cost. We're going to cap what you can buy at not more than 25,000, and we'll be giving you a 25% repeat immediately there. Governor who said his administration is not unmindful of all the challenges being faced by the citizens, noted that the government will not tolerate contraventions of its environment. I want to encourage all of us to say to ourselves that, you know, a call for a, um, civil unrest or strike or something is certainly not a solution. So that's why I'm going to plead with all of us to let us work together. As your incident commander, I'm giving you the commitment that with the committees and the advisory pool that we're pulling together, it's a bipartisan engagement. We want everybody that have an idea to come and sit with us, tell us straight that this and this is not working. Do it this way. Let us share in, in the ideas that can ensure that we take ourselves collectively out of the challenges that we find ourselves our correspondent, Adiola Kindele, calls Governor Sawalu a swing for continued peace in the state, irrespective of, the, of ethnicity, tribe, or religion, while reiterating his administration's commitment to the integrated urban transportation system and development of all sectors in the state. The Lagos Waste Management Authority, LOMA, has organized its first quarter health and safety training for sanitation workers in the state aimed at prioritizing their health, safety, and overall well-being in the course of duty. Managing Director and CEO of LOMA, Muiwa Badikeshi, noted that the authority recognized the health assets associated with manual sweeping, hence the decision to roll out a comprehensive health and safety training program, which covers critical areas like proper use of personal protective equipment, PPE, among others. I said this training empowers them to become active participants in their well-being, creating a ripple effect of safety awareness throughout Loma. According to Badegeshi, the recent distribution of lag ID cards to sweepers in collaboration with the Lagos State Resident Registration Agency, Elastra, will give them access to a comprehensive health care plan and other vital services. The Lagos State Government has reiterated its commitment to the safety of lives and property in the state. Attorney General and Commissioner for Justice in Lagos, Lawal Pedro, gave their assurance at the inauguration of the Immortal Station of the Lagos State Naval Safety Corps, LNSC. 
Pedro said security is the cornerstone of any responsible and responsive government, and the establishment of the Imota Station is a reflection of the present administration's commitment to creating a safe and secure environment for all. It said the station, which consists of office spaces, mini cell, a store and conveniences, will serve as the security hub for Imota and its environs. In his welcome address, General Manager of the Lagos State Naval Safety Corps, Ifala Dio thanked the governor for his constant, timely interventions in the area of security, especially with grassroots security, which he described as a heartbeat of a safer community as enshrined in the Themes Plus agenda. Oyenko pointed out that Governor Babajide Sumulu renovated 16 of the agency's offices while three new, three new ones were constructed and were inaugurated simultaneously at Imota, Ijede, and Urili Agege. The general manager urged all stakeholders in the community, including the royal institution, community heads and leaders, and the police, to continue to support officers of the agency and administration of Governor Babajide Sumulu in the bid to make the state safer and more secured. The federal government says Port Harcourt Refinery will begin operations by producing 2 million liters of premium motor spirit also known as petrol, and 2.2 million liters of diesel per day. The government also said the refinery is at 80% completion, noting that the old plant of the refinery will produce 54,000 bar barrels per day, while the new plant, which is in its last phase of completion, will start production by the end of the year. Minister of State Inkaruka Onyejocha made the assertions after an inspection tour of the facility, along with the leadership of organized labor, noting that combined capacities of both plants will produce 10 million liters of PMS per day. Onyejocha stated that the government is open to dialogue with organized labor and other stakeholders with the aim of achieving peace and harmony in the sector, while appealing to the union leaders to consider strike action as a last option as it sends wrong signals to investors. And on to the rest of the stories, the Chief of Army Staff, Tarid Lagbaja, has found that a report of disagreement between the military and civilians in some parts of the nation. This is just as a pledge to protect the rights of all citizens across the country. Speaking at a one-day human rights seminar organized by Nigerian Army in Lafia, Natural State, Lagoja explained that frictions are bound to occur between the military and civilians because of the influx of soldiers into civil spaces to tackle insecurity problems. He assured that all he showed all that the Nigerian army under his watch will do everything within his powers to protect and uphold the human rights of citizens while discharging its duties. Lagoja urged the participants to use the workshop as an avenue to examine all aspects of human rights and the protection of civilians in conflict areas by human rights advocacy groups, security agencies, government organizations, and the media. The federal government says it is targeting over 12 million vulnerable households in its cash transfer program. Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister of the Economy, Wale Edu, who stated this in Uyo during the 2024 ministerial retreat with the theme Achieving the Eight Presidential Priorities, the role of the ministry, said the government will increase the benefiting households from 3 to 12 million. Edwin said since May 29, the country had been set on a course of microeconomic stability. The minister added that the central bank is doing all it can to stabilize the rates and even bring down the foreign exchange rate as part of stabilizing the microeconomic picture generally. And on foreign news, police operatives say they have dismantled one of the most active smuggling gangs operating in the English Channel. 19 people were arrested in Jami following a year-long investigation by German, French, and Belgian police. Dozens of inflatable small boats, 
engines, life vests were found on route at 28 locations. A report said the smuggling gang was capable of sending eight vessels to the United Kingdom every day. It also said the gang cracked up up to 55 people in a boat designed for a 10 and charged between 1,000 to 3,000 pounds for a place. Among those arrested were five high-value targets, including the alleged gang leader and main organizers. And in the sport, members of the Ghana's women football team are set to be paid bonuses they are due before Friday's 2024 Olympic Games qualifier against Zambia. Chairperson of the Black Coins Management Committee, Gifty Owar Mensa, said she expects the country's sports ministry to deliver the funds, noting most of the time it takes a while for the nation to be able to pay their bonuses. Owar Mensa also scorched rumors that the Ghana squad would have boycotted Friday's qualifier in Accra if the bonuses were not paid. She noted that there is no tension in the team's camp. It will interest you to know that the players are owed $7,500 each for victories over the past year and qualifiers for both the Olympics and 2024 Women's African Cup of Nations. Just before we go, ensure the registration mark on your vehicle is clear and visible at all times. You can follow us and like all our various social media platforms, X, formerly Twitter, Lagos Traffic 961, Instagram, Lagos Traffic Radio 961. Watch us live on Facebook, Lagos Traffic Radio 96.1 FM. On YouTube, subscribe and watch all our previous programs and news on our channel, Traffic Radio 961. Did you know that Tomolo Administration trained 280 unemployed youths for global certification on solar farm construction technology for the supply of electricity in Nigeria? You can get more details on the Lagos State Government website. To end the news, hear the highlights of the major stories. As part of efforts to ease the current economic hardship of negotiations, Lagos State Government Babajide Sonlu has announced various interventions in different sectors, including the civil service, public transportation, health, education, food sector, among others. The Chief of Army Staff, Tawid Lagwaja, has found that the report of disagreement between the military and civilians in some parts of the nation. We also told you that the police operatives have dismantled one of the most active smuggling groups operating in the English Channel. And in sport, members of Ghana's women's football team are set to be paid bonuses they are due before Friday's 2024 Olympic Games qualifier against Zambia. For contact with the newsroom, send a message to Lagos Traffic Radio at lagosstate.gov.ng. That is the news broadcast compiled by Adewale Uluwoporoku. I am Sarah Adesoya.